Scouts had volunteered one year's service as CCOC ambassadors. CCOC stood for Chins for Christ in one century. In 1899, the first missionaries had come to the Chin Hills. Some had given their lives. Now over half the Chins had become Christian, and they set the goal of converting all Chins by 1999. Each year, 100 volunteers were trained for one month at Falang, and then they were made up into 20 to 30 teams. As the northern Chin Hills were about 85% Christian, most teams went to the southern Chin Hills. They established a base camp at a Christian village and then traveled on foot to surrounding villages to bring the message of God and Jesus Christ. For three months they would visit, preach, and witness. If a village was receptive, a team stayed longer with them while the base camp was moved to a new region. Once each year there was a rally at Hakka, the capital of the Chin State, where all the teams returned to report what God had accomplished through them during the year. In the Chin method of welcome, a decorated gate was erected and a committee of dignitaries formed to make all the preparations. Two young Chin maidens in colorful Chin dress with tall traditional headdress were selected as the first greeters. Since the church at Hakka only could hold 2,000 people, a great outdoor platform and backdrop was erected with Chin, English, and Burmese signs. From all across the Chin state, teams marching along the roads began to converge on Hakka. They came carrying their packs and Christian flags and wearing their official red CCOC shirts and blouses. They had completed their year of service and now were proudly marching to join other teams returning. On the outskirts of Hakka, they came to the traditional Chin Victory Gate decorated with ribbons, greenery, and sign, Jesus is Lord. The two selected maidens were the first greeters. At the gate, words of welcome were given. Beyond the gate, the CCOC ambassadors for Christ could see a double line of greeters and well-wishers and delegates. Now the many months and miles were over. Their task had been completed. Somehow their pack seemed lighter. A video camcorder had been hired to record this important event a new Chin tradition. A choir in traditional Chin dress sang for the ambassadors. A special welcoming song composed especially for this occasion. Then they marched through the gate between the lines of friends, the Chin way of giving them a victory welcome. So many had come to greet them, the line stretched out of sight. Many a proud parent, teacher, and friend warmly embraced the returning evangelists. On they marched, deeper into Hakka. Like a mighty army for Christ, with friends and representatives from their home associations joining them. In the center of town, another victory gate in bright red CCOC colors awaited them. The crowds were deeper Everyone had turned out to receive them. Leon Leon saw several of his Zomi Theological Seminary classmates among the ambassadors. Banners bearing the initials of each Baptist association led that delegation. A prayer of thanksgiving was said. Many wept with emotion, remembering the hard times and the two who had died in service to Christ. The Chins love guns and at important occasions, fire them off into the air in celebration. Then they went to the great playing field with the special stage. The delegates and greeters sat in their designated rows. Leon Leon and Zizing were glad they had come. The CCOC ambassadors sat on the stage and listened to words of welcome from church leaders. They remembered how demonetization had wiped out the CCOC treasury but a dedicated Christian had sold his house and given the funds so that the program could go on. 
Party officials were there, too. Many of them were Christian. The Chin state was the first state of Burma to have a Christian majority. The Chin sang another special number with special words honoring the ambassadors. And then the great moment all had been waiting for arrived. CCOC ambassadors gave their reports. One told of the village in the southern Chin Hills with 21 houses where almost everyone had accepted Christ after a team had spent the whole year teaching on a hillside. Another ambassador told of miraculous healing in a village they had visited, followed by a change of heart by the chief that allowed them to preach freely. A young woman told of her experience in the village with no Christians. After months of teaching, few had responded, but she was sure they would be more receptive when next year's team visited them. Leon Leon and Zizing felt a great feeling of elation run through the crowd as each story was told. They quietly dedicated themselves to raising next year's support money. When the reports were tabulated, over 6,000 persons had been won to Christ. A call was given for volunteers for next year's teams. Over 20 who had already served one year volunteered to serve another year. With joyful hearts, Leon Leon and Zizing set out across the mountains to their village. They would live in their home village, serve its church and a nearby Christian village, and seek to evangelize a non-Christian village over the mountain. After spending a Sunday in each of the Christian villages, on the third Sunday, they set out for the non-Christian village. While coming to this village, they greeted a boy tending fires on his burning fields. <laughs> 